Hey guys, welcome to MB Tech Talker. My name's Matt. In this video, I'm going to show you how Palo Alto Networks DNS Sync Hall is used and how to configure it on a Palo Alto Networks next generation firewall. It's so important to protect your DNS traffic. DNS is a contributing service to over 90% of malware attacks. This is because a huge amount of internet destined traffic uses DNS, including malicious traffic. Okay, so let me show you a scenario where we have an internally infected client a Palo Alto Networks firewall, a internal DNS server, external public DNS server, and of course the bad guys on the internet using a C2 command and control server. So the client forwards a DNS query to badguys.com via the internal DNS server. The internal DNS server doesn't have the fully qualified domain name in its cache, so it forwards the query onto the public DNS server. The request goes through the firewall which the firewall sees and identifies that it's a malicious or a bad site. The firewall blocks the traffic and writes it to the threat log. Well, that's great, right? Well, not quite. At this point, we don't know which client queried the malicious domain. From the firewall's point of view, the sender of the query was the internal DNS server. So it's just not feasible to investigate all the DNS queries within the DNS server, as it's, it's like trying to find a needle in a haystack. So the solution is for the firewall to take a different action by sinkholing. The firewall's sinkhole action is to forge a reply to the internal DNS query trying to go to badguys.com using the sinkhole IP address. This can either be the predefined Palo Alto Network's IP address or it can be an IP address of your choice. This sinkhole action is then recorded to the threat log. The internal DNS server will see the sinkhole address as a response to the badguys.com website and pass that response IP onto the client. The client will attempt to connect to the sinkhole IP address of the firewall, and by configuring a security policy, we can deny any traffic that attempts to connect to the sinkhole IP address. This then, in turn, records the client IP address attempting to connect to the sinkhole IP address in the traffic log. The infected client will now be recorded as the source of the DNS query and not the internal DNS server. Okay, so I've logged into the firewall. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna head over to the objects tab and then under security profiles, we're gonna go into the anti-spyware section. So this is where we configure the DNS sinkhole and DNS security. So as you can see, I already have an outbound anti-spyware profile, which was configured from a previous video. If you haven't seen my signature-based security profile video, um, I suggest you check it out as it explains these profiles in a lot more depth. I'll put a card up above. Okay, so let's open up the outbound AS security profile and then click on the DNS signature tab. Uh, under the DNS signature policies, we've got Palo Alto Networks content DNS signatures. These signatures get updated with the AV content packages every 24 hours. However, there is a limitation. The firewall can only hold 100,000 DNS signatures at a time. And these days that's not enough. This is where the Palo Alto DNS security service comes into play. The firewall will scan traffic and compare against the DNS signatures in the firewall's cache, but simultaneously sends a copy to the DNS security cloud service and will get a response back to say if the domain is malicious or not. If it is malicious, the firewall will respond to the client with the sinkhole address defined down here. Um, but you've got to make sure that the action is set, set to sinkhole. And then once this is done and you've clicked OK, um, you then can tether this outbound security profile to the security policy that is allowing DNS traffic, and then that will scan for malicious domains or malicious DNS traffic. So by applying DNS security to the allowed traffic, the firewall can perform several actions, including alert, allow, block, and sinkhole. However, using these actions alone will not identify the potentially compromised client. We could configure a simple security policy to block any traffic trying to connect to the sinkhole address, which will log the source IP address of the client in the traffic log, and that's a solid solution. However, in this video, I'm going to demonstrate a more advanced technique by tagging users who attempt to connect to the sinkhole IP address and then dynamically adding those users to a dynamic address group, which in return can be referenced in a block rule to essentially quarantine the client until there's been some further investigation. 
Okay, so the first thing we need to do is set up a log forwarding profile that will look inside the threat logs for the action sinkhole. And when the firewall sees it, it will tag it with compromised hosts. So let's do that now by going to the log forwarding section, click add, and then we're going to name this compromised hosts LFP, short for log forwarding profile. Click add, and then I'm going to name this compromised hosts um, we're going to be looking at the threat logs so we need to change that and then we're going to create a new filter and then the filter is going to be action equals sinkhole and then in the built-in actions area this is where we start using the auto tagging feature. So again, let's just call this compromised hosts. Uh, the target is going to be source address and then the registration will be using user ID. And here you can type in whatever you want or you can use an existing tag. So I'm going to use this existing tag called compromised. Click into the blue area and then click OK. And then click OK. So that's the log forwarding profile configured. OK, so the next step is to reference the tag that I just created in a new dynamic address group, which is referred to as a DAG. So let's go and click on address groups and then click add and we're going to call this quarantine hosts uh, the type is going to be dynamic and we're going to add a match criteria to match the tag compromised and then we're going to click ok so now it's time to review the security policies. So if we go to the policies tab and let's just make sure that all the security policies that allow DNS have a security profile. So if we just adjust the columns, we can see we've got security profiles, individual ones on here, and we've also got security profile groups here. So we're going to look at this internet access one. If we open it up, and we go to the actions tab we can see that we've got anti-spyware outbound as uh, and what we need to do is make sure that we assign the correct log forwarding profile that we configured earlier so let's select that and click ok we've also got some data center to users security rules again we want to make sure we've got the correct log forwarding profile and um, we've got users to dc as well and I'm the same for this one as well so now we've got the correct anti-spyware profiles configured on each of the rules that is allowing DNS and we've also got the correct log forwarding profile so at this point we have the ability to identify potentially infected clients as any attempts to visit a malicious domain will result in the firewall responding back with the DNS sinkhole address and log in the sinkhole action to the threat log, which will then result in the IP address being dynamically added to the new address group. The final part of the lab is to configure a security policy to deny access to the IP address that has been added to the dynamic address group as they could be compromised. This is essentially putting the clients into a quarantined state. Okay, so let's create that security policy now. So we're gonna click on add. I'm gonna name it block compromised hosts and then we're going to go into source tab and we're going to select the three internal zones so that's DC DMZ and users the source address will be our new dynamic address group called quarantine hosts the destination will be anything or anywhere sorry application will be any service will be any and then in the actions tab we're going to deny 
deny and then we don't need a any profiles security profiles because you only attach security profiles to rules that allow traffic and then we're going to click OK then we're going to make sure we move this block rule to the top and then we're going to commit the change Okay, so before we head over to the Windows 10 lab client to test, let's find a malicious domain to use. So if we go over to the device tab and then we go down to dynamic updates and then click check now, we can make sure that we've got the most up to date antivirus signatures. Okay, so let's open the latest release notes and then we're going to do a control F and then we're going to look for new spyware. As you can see, new spyware DNS C2 signatures. And then we're going to take a domain from the list, just a random one. Doesn't matter which one. Let's take this one. And then we copy that to the clipboard. Now we can go over to the Windows 10 client. And let's open up a browser. And let's check internet connectivity before we attempt to visit this malicious domain. So let's put in, I know, IMDB. So yeah, we've got internet access. So let's open up another tab. And then we're going to copy and paste the domain into the browser. And there may not be a website on the end of this, but this is deemed a malicious domain. So let's just hit return on that. And as you can see, the site can't be reached. So let's go back to the firewall and we're going to check the logs. So we're going to go to monitor tab and then we're going to go to the threat logs. And as you can see, there's the URL. So if I open up the detailed, <coughs> detailed log view, we can see that there's the URL we attempted to go to. DNS is the application. The log action was the compromised host LFP. And as you can see down here, we've got an action sinkhole. So if we close that, and then we go and have a look at the IP tag, we can see that both the Windows 10 client and the Windows server 2016 so the dns server have both been registered with the tag compromised and if we go to the objects and then go to the quarantine host dynamic address group and then under the addresses column click more you can see that these two clients source ips have been registered dynamically to this address group So let's go back over to the Windows 10 client and let's refresh this IMDB web page and see if we get any internet connectivity. So it looks like this machine is now actually in quarantine. It's completely locked out, locked down. It can't go anywhere. So if we go back to the firewall and we go to the monitor tab and then we take a look at the traffic logs this time, we should be able to see the source IP of the client being denied by the block compromise host security policy. So if we just remind ourselves of that policy, essentially what we're saying is any clients within these zones that have been um, dynamically added to this quarantine host DAG um, is going to be denied on any application, any service to any destination. So this would generally result in the user calling the IT service desk and a ticket being raised and passed on to the network security admins to investigate. And once the machine has been cleaned up, the file admin can unregister the client from within the DAG. So if you went back to the objects and went to the, the, the DAG, the, the dynamic address group, and then clicked on more, you can see you've got the option to unregister. So if we click on unregister tags 
and then we click add here and then we look for the tag that we register against which is compromised and then click OK and then click OK and then do the same for the internal DNS server click add and then look for the tag and then click OK and OK close that and then if we click once more into here you can see now they've disappeared out of dynamic address group so these machines will now be back on the network as long as they don't attempt to go back to that malicious domain or any other malicious domain so if we go back to the Windows 10 machine and then refresh this the machine is now back on the network and has access to the internet so that's been another successful lab I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you find it useful I'll see you in the next video okay guys that's it for today's video thanks for watching over the next coming weeks i will be uploading more videos where i will be sharing more content about palo alto firewall features and technologies and how to configure them if you like this video i'm sure you know what to do by now but just in case you don't please hit that like button below and share with your friends and be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell to get notified every single time i post a new video if you have any ideas of video content you want me to create, please put them in the comments below as I would love to hear your feedback on any aspect of my channel. Please keep watching and I will see you in the next video. Thanks.